It's a simple concept. I'm supposed to have done it yesterday. Hey, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy Scobo, and you are on the lifeboat. It is Easter. How are you? Happy Easter to uh, to my friends who are believers. I will say he is risen. How are you, Johnny Scoville? Better than I deserve, right. most assuredly. No question about that. All right. That is absolutely a fact. Um, that is absolutely a fact. <coughs> Let me find some glasses before Lisa shows up. And Lisa, we missed hearing your lovely voice yesterday. I was hoping you were going to call in, but... We did have a uh, call-in show that was you successful. Those, those glasses to your left. I'm gonna try those. You give these a shot. Yeah, man. These are the. Uh, these are like smart glasses. They are smart shades, to be sure. Do you feel smart? You look it. Oh no! Yeah. I feel like Steinfeld on that episode. Steinfeld. Yeah. That's what, that's what his these name is. These are readers, right? They, they are readers. I got you. They are readers. Let's do a little. Uh, should we do a little uh, roll call around this campus and see who is not here? Because that's really what we're looking for. So that I can chastise them at a later date. Packer girl, mischief managed. What's happening? Shannon Smith, good to see you. Tree hugger. Okay, so I need glasses. Yeah, I live for now. It's probably a good way to do it. Uh, my other's keeper. I love that. Scooby Lee, what's happening? Scoob. Grandkids galore. What's up, Dennis N.? There's the Midnight Show. It's Arla. Lover. Love Lover. Midnight show. Yep. Permission years. to come on board? Please do, Cindy. Welcome aboard the uh, boat. Balake Richardson. Happy Easter, my brother. Uh, Martha, good to see you. Meredith Lynn. There's Kelly. What's happening, Kelly? Rona McGowan. No, that would be Rhonda. McKellen. McKeelan. McKeelan. Rhonda, good to see you. Debbie P. Hey, there's Kristen Melinda. She called in last night. Good. Yeah, a great voice. Got a great voice. DeAudre Gore, what's happening? I'm a big fan, actually. Yes, so am I. Matrix Rabbit. Let me tell you something. Matrix Rabbit, good dude. Um, why, thank you. Uh, I spoke to Matrix Rabbit last night. I called him on the phone. Yeah. Tear his head off like a bottle cap. On account of the fact that it was the wrong person. So if anyone else had the same idea, Matrix Rabbit's one of us. Uh, Gemini Girl 65, good to see you. Saguaro Christmas. Uh, in fact, um, Matrix Rabbit's going to be the lead-off call on the next one. Liz Tricks, good to see you. Because we didn't get him in this last one. Queen of Awkwardness. There's that Chase the Heat dude. Subi, what's happening? Tammy Zelda, good to see you. Hey, the Rocket Queen, oh yeah. <coughs> Might be a little young, but maybe I hate nine. Lisa, good to see you. Patty Ann. Patty Ann. That was the name of the girl from uh, FNET. Remember that? I had a Patty Ann that used to take, I had to get all of my paperwork in if I wanted to get paid commissions in this company that I worked for. And it was stupid money. Like the money was stupid. We were making 20 grand a week. But if I didn't get the stuff in by midnight on Friday night, I didn't get paid. You remember? And poor, and poor Patty Ann would be there at like 2 a.m. in the morning running my paperwork through setting the clocks back doing she was just such a trooper that uh every single time i got paid i would just mail her money because the, the first i sent her a check and she mailed it back to me so i started mailing her hundred dollar bills and uh, then i actually had to go out to california to see her because she would mail money back but she was I the sweetest person I to her, I awesome. was she not a sweetheart she I hated just, calling her. I did too because it was yeah. always you a, never call once in a blue moon I would call her and say, Hey, you look beautiful today. Thanks when for I, uh, just, and I'd hang up just to, so she'd get a call that wasn't, hey, I need you to really quickly <laughs> do something, make my week. I need you to fix it. Is the volume low? It could be. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if the volume was low. It wouldn't surprise me. I got a five by five. Uh when I did go out to see her, I uh, I brought the largest bouquet of flowers that anyone has ever seen. And I'm not even being you know who probably should have taken care of her? That rascal down in Florida. He oh, never the, did. the OTA? Oh. Yeah, he never he never took care of anybody but himself. Thank you, Midnight Show. Um, yeah, he never took care Still of Still doing that. Still doing that. He's uh, he's selling soap, I think. Um, no, he's uh, he's graduated to much bigger hustles. And that's what happens, I think, when you hit OTA. I think that, um, that you like the Johnny Cam? Got a lot of people that have weighed in on the John, Johnny Cam. The uh, volume is just a bit softer for Johnny. That that makes sense. We're actually going to be wiring Johnny up with a lapel mic. We got it already. Unfortunately, we need a... A dongle. 
We need a dongle. <clears throat> if you could have seen us talking to a woman in Walmart two weeks ago, probably dog. Listen, here's the thing. <laughs> Johnny's a jackass. <laughs> That's what it is. <clears throat> Johnny is a jackass. And he had such Lisa Trimble, good to see you, hun. Piano mom. Thank you for all that you are and do. Um, my uh by the way, piano mom, we we've uh no, I'll send you an email. Uh you're gonna bust me about the dongle? No, so here's the thing on the dongle. It was right? funny. It was definitely funny, right? But Johnny walked in to make it funny. So before we ever got in the building, he had this thing in his head of what he was going to, uh, how much fun he was going to have using the word dongle with whoever showed up to be our, uh, our salesperson. Then unfortunately, the person that shows up to be our salesperson is, Older than we are. conservatively speaking, about 103, right? What was she? Just, she was a few years older than me. Just, we'll give her that. A there, was a time, there was a time, right, before electricity that... She was probably hell on wheels, but this was not a woman that knew a great deal more about electronics than we did. So when Johnny came strolling up with the, Hey, I need a dongle. You know, I, I didn't say that. I said, could you point me in the direction of a dongle, please? That's what he said. Where, where would I find the dongles or something like that? You know what I mean? It just, it, it was a little, creepy. we got the, would you call me luck? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was the look. And, and that's the look you would have given him too. Cause it's creepy. It was, it was, it was, I don't know. It didn't, uh, it was a little creepy. I think I think we scared the woman, and then she just kept doing this one. Did you say dongle? <laughs> Stay Spiria, good, good to see you, Elizabeth Whitney. How are you? Here's the deal. Since then, other people have walked in and said, "Where are your dongles?" And she's brought them right to the that, spot. There is some truth to that, although no, not really, because even that day, I know we, had we didn't get to the we dongles. We found the dongles uh, the the next time we were there. Um, the superstar. AKA Celine, what? I'm gonna have to. The superstar, Black Cow. Huh? Celine Black Cow? Hey, hey, from Dublin, Ireland. Do you know I shared your sunrise this morning from Ireland? It's a true story. A uh, fellow. Uh, Fellow life boater and a uh, and a believer sent me the um, the sunrise pictures from the uh, from the graveyard right next to their uh, church. It was one of the most beautiful photos you've ever seen. Really was breathtaking, and was kind enough to say, "I thought I would send you a different uh, sunrise. I know you missed a lot of them. If you've been on the boat, I talk a lot about that. The uh, I don't rise this anymore." Surprised she didn't have a stroke after being asked for Johnny's dongle. Well, she looked a little, uh, she looked a little, that's kind of where I was going with this. She looked a little uh, like she might, uh, like she might fall down. You know, there was a little of that going on. You know, here's the thing, Stace Fury. It's a great word. It really is. It's fun to say. It rolls off the tongue. And, and really the reaction you get from people who don't know what a dongle is, is magic. Magic. Well, and here's the deal. What, what are the odds that you go? I don't know what a dongle is unless you're, you know, I guess it's, if an age doing, thing. it's a generational thing. Or if you do what we do, because at some point you had to buy every single stupid adapter that you could possibly. If you if you do something on YouTube, you probably bought adapters you didn't need. I got an entire box of crap I bought that I should have bought. Just stuff together. You can make I, anything connect. Absolutely the truth. And, and it last weekend, that was brutal. It was just so odd. I feel like a monkey with a math doing, problem. We I'm start like, doing Legos. You're, you're taking all these. If well, I get that adapter things. and bring that in and we take that dongle and, you know, no, run it down to this. It, it really is the silliest. There is a one of the most ridiculous things I ever saw on television. Do you remember a show called uh, My Name is Earl? Do I? <laughs> Forget about it. Yeah, it's a great show. <laughs> so uh, it is a great show, by the way. But I was watching. Um, I relate to it. Okay. You can, uh, th there was an episode on there where, um, they needed a translator, right? And the only translator that they could find, uh, that, cause they were trying to translate from, um, Japanese to English, right? But their translator, it ended up being sick. So the only, they had to go with somebody that couldn't hear. So they're using three translators in this court. It's one of the most ridiculous like for the hearing impaired, the language, the yeah. correct. It's one of the it's, dumbest it's, it's scenes. It's a verbal dongle. It's a verbal dongle. It's a verbal dongle. That's what I was getting. At. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a, and it's one of just the, the, the dumbest. But I loved, absolutely loved. My name is Earl. 
and, and you know why? Because it's my life. It's what I do oh, these days right. anyway, right? I mean, I, I go around and uh, my list is considerably uh, longer than Earl's was. Uh, sadly. <laughs> sadly, I don't want to. You know what, though? Here's I am too, but here's the way I look at it. If we just keep chipping away at it, well, you know what I mean? I know we're emptying an ocean with a thimble, but as long as you're using that thimble every day, that's the way I look and at I it. And I am. Um, do I remember Long Duck Dong from 16 Candles? Oddly enough, I do. Um, oh, but he made other appearances. Um, if you're a fan of, uh, of, um, what's his name? Who made all those films? Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, all of them were uh, made by one. So they're going to get it before you do. No, I got a pretty sharp crowd. I got a pretty sharp crowd. That would be, um, Ferris Bueller, 16 Candles. Uh, John Hughes. Whoa. Beat everybody, by the way. You people didn't beat me. He didn't beat Bologna, me. Baloney, a Mile High uh, Hokey. Did. Mile High Hokies was not on that screen Whatever. when I said that. Hold on, where is it? Oh, that's right. Um, which one is still in Mile High Hokey? I'll be back in one second, people. Yeah. Mile High Hokey. Um, who's the one that's still in? Because I know that the... The heavier of the two, I remember watching a. Uh, you remember the 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 guy that was in. Um, remember the Titans, big big dude. My understanding is, Earl and his and his bro were both Scientologists. Earl left though. I thought the brother did too. Somebody fact check that for me, could you? I, I'm pretty sure I saw it on AA Runs channel. I think that's where I saw it. That's where I usually get my uh, Scientology stuff. For some reason, my name Earl abruptly ended. Um, is it is that one of those uh, like weird Hollywood things? I mean, was that an odd uh, thing how that one ended? I don't know. Lisa White has a great comment, and I know the answer to this. Anyone else stressed about family time today? My mom is very difficult. Pretty much the perfect queen. I feel guilty saying that, but truth. You know what? Don't feel guilty saying that. Um, Jason Lee is still in. There is a question mark on that though. So she's not telling me she's asking me. Um, no, Jason Lee is out, says D'Audre Gore. <laughs> Can we all agree that that is a good thing? That is a good thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jason Lee from the Kevin Smith movies. Yep. 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 R.M. Blake, my thoughts and prayers are with you and your sister. Um, that's uh, uh, that's you know, hard. Squirrels sleeping out there. Yeah, yeah. Squirrel sleeps when the rest of us need uh, to do things, and when uh, she's pushing it, she, she is. is pushing it. I'm not fooling. You got to be really honest. I was so nice last oh, night. Oh, there you are, huh? Oh, look who it is. Look at that, huh? What's up there, attitude problem? Yeah. I'm boy, oh boy, you. man, the cat is back on it. Two nights, in, two bad nights in a row. Squirrel. You know, I'll tell you what. I'm I'm a little stressed out about um about the Easter thing, about doing the uh, the family uh, deal. I'm gonna go grab my kid, and we're going over to uh, to my sister's, and we're gonna have a big uh, a big thing. But there are, I mean, how many people are here right now? So oh. my nieces and nephews uh, are in town. So my. Uh, my the niece that I always talk about, who's kind of like my first daughter, right? Before I before I had um, Cedar, I had uh, my sister had a baby girl that was the same age as Spanx Calhoun. Um, Shea Rose today, the Rousseau family are doing the Shea Rousseau. I love it. Have a good time with that. We uh, we used to go to the uh, Woodstock Inn on Easter. It was a, always a pretty big uh, thing in the, in the town that I grew up in. Mother's Day and Easter. I remember going to at least two of those after a fist fight the night before. Unable to chew. Do you remember those? I got one of them was bad. Oh, was Mother's Day. Mother's Day. We got we got into this horrific brawl. It wasn't our fault. It wasn't our fault. Which is irrelevant to this. I know. To this I story. mean, I mean, it's, it's it, you're right. It wasn't our fault. Well, that no, might have been our fault. It was your fault, is who it was. It was not my fault. If, How do you say if, that? if it had been filmed, you had no idea of anything that went on, and you just watched the film of it. Would you, you? 
Did the camera follow me from the parking lot? The parking lot? Did yeah, it? yeah, yeah. From the time you got out of the car. There. I think I'm okay there. Because if you followed me from the parking lot, and you saw that, it was an accident. You knew I wasn't. You hit, you hit the guy in the tip of the nose. You ever flick a bottle cap and they zip off like this? It literally got the dude right in the tip of the nose. Uh, but it was an accident. It was an accident. Right. But at a distance, it probably didn't look that way. All right. And I hit him first because if I didn't, horrible things were going to happen. So that was, I was justified there too. Wasn't I? Yeah, tell that to the judge, man. For real. Nobody here is going to buy it. This is a, I, it was, Speaking of which, here's Tommy Stiggs. How under, how over. Tommy Stiggs ain't buying it, I guarantee well, you. Tommy, we were outnumbered, what, 10 to 1, 10 to 2? We were outnumbered. Maybe 12 more, to 2? Yeah, we were outnumbered. And more they were that. all throwing punches. So just don't tell me that. I, I, was I didn't say In anything. Fact, I should have grabbed a weapon. I should have grabbed something like a, 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 Scott, a chair. Scotty grabbed a weapon. We, had a, we yeah. had a friend there with a weapon. It worked out. But. Um, I'm just saying that if you would have been watching this at a distance, it probably looked like we went in and trashed this person's house. <laughs> it probably, it probably looked really bad. They had they had these uh, like three um, shelves. shelves that were kind of built into the wall, and they had mirrors behind them, and they had their uh, hand blown glass goblets. There were a lot of hand blown glass goblets, and then there were a lot of um, of like China dishes and there things were way like that. too many people in a house like that is the problem. It wasn't, it wasn't a good situation, but when Johnny hit this dude, he went down really fast. And when he came up, he kind of looked like ET. Yeah, Just this, like that. Is there it, it, like it? No, it swelled really quickly. My friend said, as the kid stood up, bro, you look like ET. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, there were a lot of people and one actually had a knife. It was kind of a, it just looked really like it was going to go really bad. And our and friend, the worst part was a sister skull. Was there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Our sister was there, which was a bummer, but our friend took the leg of the table, like a baseball bat was gonna, and sort of swung it. And everybody kind of did that hop back number, but it's just kind of a little bit of room when he swung it the next time, they kind of tried to time it to get. And when everybody came in, they didn't get at him, but we hit that shelf behind us. And everything on those three shelves came down at once. Oh, that was terrible. And the and the tinkling of broken glass stopped like six hear. seconds ago. I can still hear it. it. That we were running out the door. He right? said, You boys looking for a way out. That's exactly the words that came out of his mouth. You boys looking for a way out of here. Yeah. And he though there was a white light behind him. <laughs> I swear to you, I was so scared <laughs> in that moment because that's the kind of fight you get killed. Yeah. Seriously, when they stomp you like a brush fire. Yeah. And this was, I didn't not, know how to get out is the problem. You're in this house and they were blocking one exit. We didn't know there was another and he did. You know, the Rousseau, she, here's one for the Rousseau. So here's one that nobody else, it, we were in Windsor. There you go. The, uh, the Rousseau woman will understand. We yeah, were, we yeah. were in Windsor. This is, this probably wasn't the town we should have been in anyway. Yeah. I mean, by way of full disclosure, they weren't fond of us. They, uh, they seemed to think that kids from our town were rich and spoiled, which very well could be the case, but it wasn't the case that evening, I assure you. Everybody in that uh, in that it place that night was actually from Bridgewater. Derek, we split, and that kid Derek and remember that he yeah. didn't get out of there. Yeah, and they that, beat the brakes off. It there. wasn't Derek. No, I'll, it'll it'll hit me, and you're gonna laugh really hard because he was. But somebody, uh, one kid from the town, didn't get out, and they tuned him up. They did. They beat him up pretty good, and but, he was and he's the most peace loving dude. He was a deadhead. I'm sure the entire time they punched him, he was going, you're so uncool. Yeah, you're so right. uncool. What? Wasn't that him? No. No. The name will occur to me, and then I'll tell you, and you'll right. laugh hysterically. Um, but, yeah, I felt bad because he was, you know, he just wasn't the fighting kind of guy. But um, we really did. And that morning, the next morning, this though. House. So we're, in the, we're at this buffet the next morning, and Tom has got us. a lump on the side of his head here. His jaw looks like he's got a, a softball in his cheek. Yeah. I got a black guy. I'm sitting here. It's all, it's all I'm sorry. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> you didn't want to look at them. And the only thing that saved us was Sister Scoble was there and she said, I swear it wasn't their fault. Yeah. And that is, really helped us a lot. But that was a Mother's Day morning. That would have been the, per the perfect song, too. What I'm sorry. The whole table, it's no one's terrible, talking. Man. And we're just putting food in and you Jello. can't chew, right? Jello and like anything soup. soft, custard soup, jello. Soup. Uh, what are you having for breakfast? Soup with a soup chaser. Oh, that was all bad. The stupid stuff you do when you're young. But that was one of the worst ones, actually. That actually really was a bad one. The, uh, uh, but. 
They did have a great buffet. Do you know what they charged that buffet that lot long ago? Do you know how much it was? It was like was... thirty bucks a person a thousand years ago. I yeah. What it costs now? Oh, I, I can't imagine. It's fifty imagine. bucks a person. It's got to be. Oh no, it's way over. That. Right I, I, it's way over that. I'm not even fooling you. You know what? Don't ask the guy's name. But, I won't. But, I won't. but you should I'm check. Not say he working. Yeah, you should probably check and uh, and see if the guy's working. Because, um, yeah, the uh, you can hear it in your head. Uh, if 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 they, we had filmed it, it would have been absolutely perfect. Wow. Hey, Rich, quick question. Um, is Billy is Billy working today? Um, Billy, oh, with reservations? Yeah. I don't know her. Uh, no problem. One last question for you. We're thinking, we're thinking oh, about coming so down with some family friends. What's the uh, buffet nowadays? What's the uh, dollar per, how much does it cost per person for the breakfast? Do You're kidding. When did you stop that? Okay, so what's a Mother's Day deal? What's the Mother's Day brunch cost? Oh, we'll get back to you. We it's got plenty of time. Your first kid and maybe your car. Yeah, okay, there you yeah, go. Awesome. Hey, Rich, Perfect. it was good talking to you. You sound great. You take care. I know who that was. That was Rich. I yeah. know who that was, too. We we worked at this hotel, and the, and the, the staff has never changed. I have that, memory, that phone number by memory. You understand? I worked there when I was 18. Yeah, it's Eagle One. <laughs> it's Eagle One. That was Rich. The they dispatchers. Just a car up in his apartment. The dispatchers would go, Eagle One. You know what? Um, and Billy's not there anymore. And she, he thought I meant Billy, the woman yeah, that yeah, had yeah. a smoke ring over her desk. You remember that? Yes. She did reservations and she would smoke it. She How is she still alive? There was an ash hanging off it this long and she had one in the, in the ashtray. And How above is her desk, alive? I swear to you, above her desk was a yellow ring about five feet around over her desk. We used to walk in just to look at the ring. It was the most disgusting thing you've ever seen in your life. That entire office. When you walked in, you could stick your finger to the wall. Like if you just took a piece of paper and put it, it would stick to the wall. And all it was was like tar and nicotine. Oh, gosh. How she is she dog. still she had alive? a dog, a black lab that would always run away from the house. Oh, anyway, yeah, it yeah, had this, yeah, yeah. on the tag of the dog, it said, kick my butt and tell me to go home. Yeah. That's what it said on the dog's tag because she ran away so often. It did. And her girlfriend was literally half of her age which made for the she had a, uh, a a woman i don't know if they were married or not but uh she was a teacher at the high school mm -hmm. the one that yeah. vinnie got uh, was in love with anyway so what a small little weirdo town that we grew up in strange little, strange little town <laughs> but you know what they used to do like when we were kids right right next to this big hotel in the middle of uh, of this town right this is a this is a hotel that would be legit in any city right for real. Like, this would be legit in New York City, downtown. It's a very, very nice hotel. Oh, but it happens to be super posh. But it happens to be in a place where there isn't anybody. Right? The entire town doesn't... There's not enough people in a town this size to justify a hotel this big. So it's really odd when you see where it is and everything else. It's a very, very um, very unusual little uh, little spot. Um, SB, I'm sorry to hear this. It is My to brother our, passed it away. It is to our town what a coal mine is to a coal mine. It's every kid's first job in the town. It is every kid's first job. And and you could move in. Like at 16, you could go get a job and say, I want to live here. And they would take a dollar a day out of your check. And it's you could live in what was called the Anglican house. I remember the Anglican house. <sighs> right. it's a Boy, did I smoke a lot of pot. Yeah, Anglican I'll tell house. You. I smoked a bunch. On breaks. Yeah. What do you think it was there for? <laughs> yeah, I smoked a bunch of pot. That's that's really the only. On break, you ran, you ran next door and you ran up to the guys and banged on the door. Who's got weight? It was it was really like a fraternity is what it was. But those guys that just answered the phone have been working and living in the Anglican house for 40 years. Am I lying? No. 40 years. It's insane. I'm sorry about your brother, SB. Yeah, for real. Since my brother passed five years ago, a dear uncle passed eight hours later and my mother passed three days after that. I still haven't grieved, but I'm working on it. With all due respect, SB, five years, we need to work on it a little bit harder. Right? That's a long time to go without grieving. And there is a process, right, that we all go through. We need it. Um, but your sister passed five months after that. Yeah, it's been a bit a bit rough from the sound of it, SB. Um, but we need to start doing some journaling and, and start doing some things where you you uh, deal with this. Take care of you. Take care of you. You got to talk about, you have to talk about the, um, you know, 
journaling about my father has been what has kept me, uh, my, you know, my sanity through all of that. Cause I really, I, did, I struggled really hard that I wasn't there, you know, um, just, just tough. Hold on. Sorry for all the ones that hit me. Maple leaf insold the maple leaf insold. Oh no. Really? Yeah. The, uh, that's piano mom said the, um, I used to work at the Woodstock Inn and resort rock resort. So did Johnny was our, uh, both of us, gig. both of us first, uh, first real job. I mean, we mowed yeah. lawns and did whatever, but that was the first real gig. Brittany says, and I believe that's Vitney, uh, Brittany Van Brackle. I like saying Van Brackle. Yeah. Uh, Everybody. Tommy, I just watched last night's call-in show. It was amazing. It was like listening to a late night uh, call-in radio show. Well, that's all Spanx Calhoun. That uh, I promise you, all of the uh, all of the props on that one goes to my kid. At 20 minutes after the hour of six, I didn't think there was a chance that was getting up <clears throat> and running, and I was about as stressed out as you could possibly be. Um, Reese got to Reese got to watch that. That's fun. I honestly, I probably did better than I've ever done before, and I think it's because Spanky was doing it, and I I had faith that he could do it. It's frustrating because I couldn't, but I had faith that he would uh, pull it off. And Reese and I just sort of talked, and then the next thing you know, Reese was like, "I'm pretty sure we're live." But it's a lot of fun. Holy hell, is it fun to do call-in shows? I mean, it is so much fun. Yeah, grieving is different for everybody. That's a great comment. Nicholas says, grieving is different for everyone. The process of so many shocks in quick succession gets in the way of processing. That's absolutely a fact. It really is. Um, and under the best of circumstances, right? Grieving is not easy and it never works. It, do, it doesn't. There's no, well, there's no real formula. You can there's not a, it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody. Right. Great books have been written, have been written, you know, and, and we go through the five stages and we all know this stuff. We've done shows on it here. But what it really comes down to is it's different for every single person. And you don't you do not get over anything. It's a stupid thing when people go, you know, the, the term get over it is something that just makes me want to vomit. We don't get over anything. Nope. You, know, you, you can get over it. losing a job. Right. You don't get over losing a family member. Um, you learn to live with it. Right. And it's a different life. Your life is never the same after you you lose somebody that you love, you and it doesn't matter how you lose all them. over again. What's that? You almost got to learn to do. Everything. You do. You learn to live all over again, and and that's whether or not you lost somebody in a divorce, right, or you lost somebody to death. Either way, I mean, it's we really go through some some pretty rugged crap in life, and the and the saddest part is that we go through it for the most part without any instruction. Um, I believe that's good. We well, like that one. The grieving process. It's not like you know, hey. it's not like. It's ever over where you get the green light. Hey, you're good now. You know what I mean? There's never any, there are no mile markers that you, that you can look at and go, okay, okay, I'm good. You know, you, you some days are better than others. It's just the way it is. Right. Now, here's the thing. This cat does not jump on my shoulder to get in the basket unless the camera's on. It's true story. Do you find that funny? It's true story. Every time she gets into the basket. You know why basket, she's doing that? So you don't kill her for what she's done for the last two days in a row. Well, there could be she's some trying, truth to she's that. She's working the cute factor. It's exactly what she's doing. Look at her. She's looking at me while that's happening. That's because she's on to you. She knows I'm on to her. Yeah. Now get in that basket. Um, yeah, she just needs to get in the basket and act like a good cat. She's not going to, you watch. She's going to jump up on top of stuff and knock things down because she's just a, a real piss of day. I, the last three or four days, I don't know what's gotten into the cat. She, she's going to knock. If you could just see, oh, it's that camera. If you see Johnny Scoville disappear, it's because the cat decided to get rid of him. She goes like this, in and out of these glass things and lamps. And she's well, we're also a... making a nice little obstacle course for her. Okay, we almost got. All right, now come on back. She's just showing off. This is she the same is. show she, she did yesterday. Down? She's doing the balance beam down this quarter of an inch. Squirrel. All right, now you, hey, come here. You're bothering me. Come on. Yeah, she almost got in there. Do that again. I, bet you I, I don't think I could hold it out straight. That's the reason right. I put it. When I held the basket up, she actually tried to get in it, but it would have been very hard holding a 13 pound kitty. Is she going to back out of there? She, she can't go around the corner. She can't go around the corner. No. Good God. Guess what? Oh. Wow. You know what? We're not pros, but I wish you could have seen you, what just happened. You saw what she just did. Did you think she could do that? No. How did she even do it? I don't know. I don't know how it did. Yeah, that's that could have been horrible. Wow. Been watching the, those squirrel videos on Chase the Heat. 
yeah, he, uh, he he uses my cat like a uh, like a prostitute. That's all good though. I mean, it's no big deal. You know, I come home and ten times more views in the last month than we, I personally have. We've been talking about it, and actually, yeah, the uh, the most popular Scoville is absolutely Squirrel, um, and then probably Spanky, um, and then uh, Johnny, and I'm and I probably am uh, bringing up the uh, the rear on that. Squirrel's an adorable adolescent. She'll mellow out, says Zelda. You're right, Zelda. We talk about that a lot. I think and you give her three or four years, and we'll, we'll be, she'll be talking. I mean, she's just, well, you know what? Um, 30 years, Dennis, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I love, I love this. Spanx is adorable. Um, and, and always has been. It's, you know, last night it was really funny. Uh, we were not even last night. It was probably two hours before we got, uh, we got rolling. He's troubleshooting stuff. And, you know, the people that, that set the software and all the stuff up, they're not in this country, right? They, they never are. So he's having to arrange calls you know from other countries and but i'm watching him because the entire time that spanky was going yesterday we basically had the show up and running because it had to be going all the, the whole time for him to test it so every time i just happen to walk through the office there's my kid you know he's on the computer but he was typing away at one point and and his his uh eyebrows were doing this one right? or I, I saw that i came in to get my guitar I'm like, i didn't know he was here so i was shocked i'm like are you live what's going on I didn't realize he was doing that. And he did. He had that furrowed brow. Like and it's what focused. he did when he was a little kid. Oh, he really? did it. Yeah. I have pictures of him when he's five days old. Uh, Papa Scovo used to say he looks like uh, he looks like he should be a delegate to the uh, to the Russian uh, Federation. You know, he always had that look like like, the, like just a, and he as a baby, like he was five days old. The first picture we have of him, he's like this. His lips are all pursed like he's just pissed. And he had that little concentration thing. And when I was looking at him last night, it was just a really amazing moment. I was like, holy hell, he's a, you know, he's just a grown man. He's 32 years old. And, uh, but looking at that, looking at him, I was like, there, that was my kid. He was right there. It was just such a trip. Um, comment. I feel like I've lost my former self. Boy, I get it. And I've been grieving uh, that death for two years. It's like learning how to be a whole new human. It's a strange and scary, but kind of exciting thing. Uh, this is exactly what I did. That's the approach, though. Kind of exciting. As long as yeah. you have that. Yeah, this is exactly what I did, uh, Brittany. And I will tell you this. Uh, June 27th will be nine years since uh, I did heroin, right? And uh, it's still strange and scary and exciting, right? It really is. It's, um, I'm, uh, and I did, I did exactly what you're talking about. I, I did it from whole cloth. Like, I. I threw out everything that was me and uh, started from scratch. That's literally what I did. Spanx looked so professional last night, which is something that they say about you and I all the time. Oh yeah, we get that. We get that a lot. People are always telling us we look like pros. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a great, it's a great compliment. Though. That's awesome, Zelda. You're awesome. How do you grieve your whole family? who is still alive, but you are dead to them because of your addiction. Elizabeth Whitney, my wow. sister, right? My sister, welcome to your family, right? Because if your family, uh, if you're dead to them because of your disease, then you need to pick a new family. And for those who say you can't choose your family, we say BS, right? We've done it here. I've got brothers and sisters all over the place. Speaking of which, Brazy girl, how are you? Well, my sister's right there. By the way, last night, Brazy, come on, man. I'm not losing any sleep over the BS, right? Bad people are bad people. Good people are here. You're one of them. Um, Spanx crushed it last night. There's no question. Good he did. gracious, mountain girl. Tommy, your birthday is actually my birthday. Really? Good so you mean, uh, you mean little Tom Cruise? All you right. little Tommy Cruz? That's right. Shut up. Are you it? serious? Yeah, you've heard this. When I went out to the thing at, uh, at Emmett's place, little Tommy. little Tommy was there. And he said, he came to the door and went, you're Brett. I said, yeah. He goes, I'm Tom Cruise. I said, I'm aware of that. And he said, you know, you and I were born on the same day. And I said, uh, yeah. He goes, what are the odds? And I said, one in 365. Right? And I got nothing. I mean, he didn't even, he didn't even smile. He wanted to laugh. The Scientology wouldn't allow it. Right. Uh, my date at the time laughed, but that was hysterically funny. 
Uh, he, however, did not get a laugh out of it. But yeah, me and little Tommy Cruz were going on the, uh, you know what? You're not beating yourself up for that. That's just, uh, yeah. you, you didn't do anything wrong. You're a kind human being. Never forget that, huh? His name is my name, too. <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> and whenever we go out, the people always shout. Yeah, well played, Calvin. Well played. I love this boat, too. I have to tell you about the sobriety sign I saw yesterday. I was driving around yesterday, and I see a guy on the side of the road. I didn't have any money, or I swear to you, I would have given him some. Couldn't read his sign. As I got closer, it said, I had a problem, but I did the hokey pokey, and I turned myself around. If I had, if all I had was a C note, he was going to get it. I didn't have a dime in my, any cash on me, but his sign, I did the hokey pokey, and turned myself around. It was yep. awesome. Elizabeth Whitney. Welcome. You have family here. You see those? It's uh, a, um, oh, we have brothers and sisters all over the world here. Amen. We really do. And uh, it's, there's a power in that, that I don't know you guys get the, uh, the full gist of, and maybe it's because of the, the fact that it all gets pointed in my direction, but I can't begin to tell you the power and connection in all of this. I cannot begin to tell you. Um, Matrix Rabbit says he 100% crushed it last night. Um, that's why you have a screening system. Calhoun crushed it. There is no, absolutely no mistake in that. And we were so happy. And um, we just, you know. Can I tell you, watching you guys set that up, I was like watching the Willenda walk across the tiger. I, know, I right. hope he could do it. I was sitting here outside thinking, God, I hope he can pull this off. That's what it looked like to me. Like I knew he was dancing that line and you were yeah. like watching him. Like, <laughs> Well, and so is Reese, right? So oh. Reese is there too. And it's like having two people looking over your shoulder while you're doing everything. And he, yeah, he, I thought she he did it. it. Yeah, he just knocked it out, which was uh, the, the best thing is that every single time we do it, right? So if you look at the first show, the first show was to see if people would call. And the reason is no crap, right? We had this set up once and we had people that did it for us, had it all ready to roll. And it was kind of automated even, right? But um, we, we, we just didn't get calls. Seventh Son used to bail us out. Seventh Son used to call every single time. <laughs> he really did. And the guy will tell you he hates his own voice, right? Most people do, but he's he's been vocal about that and just took it for the team every single time. He would always call him, right? Always. And I never forget that. I love him for it. But when we wanted to do that test fire, when we test fired it and got 611 calls in 38 minutes, uh, we said, well, um, last night was really no different and we didn't advertise right? We didn't advertise for a reason. Tracy, you knocked that stuff off right there. Do you see that? The hell's gotten into Tracy. Tracy, you're drinking again, aren't you? <laughs> I'm kidding. He, uh, he's in the process of getting a raise. I promise you. Calhoun's being taken care of. He'll, uh, he'll do okay. Um, I would love for you to send me a link. Uh, to the documentary about your mom. That would be fantastic. Please do. Sober at myyahoo.com. Please. There we go. It's funny that you say Let's this. See. Because you know what? Tonight, I'm going to be doing a night yard. Right? I'm going to do a night yard here tonight. And I intend to have my uh, friend Russ with me. Right? Peckerwood Russ will be uh, sitting in the uh, the seat with me. And... Uh, if we can get old Spanx Calhoun involved, we're going to fire this thing up, right? Um, and uh, let you guys call in and ask some questions of the uh, convicts. SB says, as long as there's no union talk between Spanx and Squirrel, you should be okay. It's already it's already happened, for real. Um, neither of them will admit it, but I found some odd literature in uh, in Squirrel's Did you basket. Really? Yeah. Well, I've got about 30 videos I've stockpiled just in case, so I'm, okay. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, look at her. Really, she's looking at me. I know. Do you see that stare? This is this is. I really, wish you could see the stare. This she's really is. Me. Disdain. She's looking at me with disdain. Look at that look. She knows she's the talent in this place. She absolutely knows she's the talent in this place. Question: The hardest and the easiest things to deal with when you were first incarcerated. Thank you. I'll be honest. Um, my life had been so out of control. Right. I mean, you got to realize that, you know, you're robbing banks to get to get dope money, right? And you got to still, no matter how much money you got, you have to go out and commit a felony three or four times a day just to get the drugs that you need. I, I don't mean committing the, I mean, going and meeting these people in parking lots, right? 
it's just, it's a constant pressure of everything you're doing is illegal. And there's people looking over your shoulder the entire time. So the easiest thing, honestly, was when that door slammed shut, I knew I was going to get sick and I knew I was going to be going through all of that stuff. Right. But the, you know what, there's no, there's nobody that needs money from me right now. I don't have to go hustle up this or that. Um, it, what it really came down to was it's, uh, you know, all of the pressure of um, the life. You, you'll watch people all the time and, and even murderers or whatever, and you see them getting interrogated. And when, when they finally break and they say, you know what, I did it, you can watch the relief. And I promise you that that's the easiest thing for all uh, criminals. You know, a cop told me once, he said, when you go in to do an investigation, yeah, you can tell if the person is innocent or guilty. He said the guilty ones are asleep. Right. Then they perp nap. Yeah, perp nap. You go in and they're sound asleep. They might have they might have murdered somebody four hours later. I mean earlier, but they are in there going to sleep because the realization that all of that pressure that you have been dealing with your entire life just went away. For real. Because the whole time you're going, Oh my God, if I get caught, if I get caught, I'm caught. <laughs> right? Eighty percent of what my life's fear is now over because I'm in the middle of it. Right. There's no there's no more being freaked out about the what if I'm living the what if. So that was the easiest part. Um, the hardest thing, and I'm being a hundred percent real. The hardest thing was um, the, the fact that women had been removed from my existence. I've been pretty open about, uh, about how messed up my life has been vis-a-vis uh, -vis relationships with women. Right. But one of the things that I did in order to remain normal in my head was I slept with a lot of people, right? And I didn't spend a lot of time with these people, right? It was, it was a very kind of one night standy, um, turn and burn kind of a, kind of a thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you get to prison and there are no women, <laughs> right? So my, my coping skills were drugs and, uh, and wildly casual sex. Right. Both of them were gone instantly. And the drug thing, you know, you, you don't you don't come to realize, especially at this juncture of my uh, of my incarceration. At this point, I don't understand the disease concept. I don't understand any of this crap. Right. Um, but I do know this. I can't get any dope. Right. And this other thing this getting laid <laughs> thing is a coping skill. Right. I don't know this. But I know that it's not there. And I know that it's a constant thing. And this may sound insane, but women smell fantastic, right? Women smell fantastic. Whether or not you're wearing anything, right? Women have a smell that does not smell like men. The, the disappearance of any smell other than men was the hardest thing to deal with. Honest to God, this is something that... and. I told Reese this one thing and she was like, I thought she was going to have a heart attack because she laughed so hard. The, uh, because of the transgender things that are starting to really make a lot of um, inroads into the prison system, there are certain yards that have um, uh, women born who, are, who had been born men on those yards. I was not on any of them, right? Till the last four months of my sentence, six months of my sentence, when I got transferred to a level two yard. But they screwed up. And for two weeks, every single yard in the BOP had the ability to order basically uh, women's products, right? Anything. So one of the things was uh, a deodorant, stick of deodorant. It's the first time you smelled anything. And I bought it, right? I bought the thing because somebody said to me, "That's you know what that is? That's a woman's deodorant. I bought it, right? And about 12 other people had the exact same idea. But I was telling Reese, I used to take that stuff and put it on my finger, right? And just walk around all day long going, sniffing it. I sold that stick of deodorant, right? For 75 bucks. I believe it. For $75. It was right as I was getting ready. And, and I had about three months left on my rip, right? And I was like, I could use the cash. The second I sold it, I was like, oh man, I don't know why I did that. You know, I don't know why I did that. But women who work in prisons are not allowed to wear any, uh, they can't wear anything that has a scent. Here's the thing. You can't erase it. You can't. No, you can't. But when you walk out that door and you go into a place where 75 women are wearing uh, perfume, right? It is overwhelming. 
I mean, it's like a dog with his head out the window driving the car. It's like a dog with his head out the window. I, I really, a Drakkar, uh, Kestrel says, sounds like me with Drakkar in the 90s. I spritz that stuff on my pillow. Drakkar Noir. I, uh, yeah. I threw a little of that on in the 90s. I think everybody wore that in the 90s. I brag about your olfactory uh, prowess on a regular basis. Johnny Scoville is a freak. Uh, when when I had Johnny for a wingman back in the day, right? When uh, for real, when Johnny uh, first moved down to Texas, he had, uh, I would say to him, I would I would point to somebody and I'd be like that girl right over there, and Johnny would walk up and you know order a drink or do whatever, and then he would walk back and he'd be like, you know, she, she, she's wearing Chanel, well she's wearing beautiful. Like he can tell you every. I'm not kidding. This not is every, super, back in the day. I knew you were a freak. You were a freak. I don't ever remember sending you to somebody where you came back and went, I don't know what that was. Every time. And then when you walk up and go, hey, are you wearing Michael? There's something about that. It's the It was the greatest icebreaker in the world. But uh, yeah, he was good at it. I have told you when he wasn't a great wingman. You should go back and watch some of those. So, yeah. You know what I used to do? If I had something big happening in my life, like a new job or something big going on, I would buy a new shaving cream that I've never used before. Right. Because when I use it, it was something different. I'd smell Absolutely. And you two, 10 years from now, if I buy that again, I flash back to that morning. Did you get that from Judd? Because he was a big, that, that was a big thing. But I do that. I do that. Even now, if something huge happens, I'll buy something, even if it's not shaving cream, something different that I can smell, it'll trigger that. What do you think? Poison? Um, was it the worst perfume of the 80s? An A and A. Uh, Rene, Sunday, oh, whatever that, is. Yeah, that yeah. stuff was. There was a time where everything, everybody. Was okay, much. you know the one that I didn't like for real, CK one. CK one was that that thing that it was either for men or women. Do you remember this? A pixie. I can smell the scoville from here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you know that when when this was going on, we were right in your backyard. Every one of every good story that I, yeah, CK one sucked, Castro. You're right. Every story that I have in Texas started with. So I swung by the Cartman's place in Baytown, right? That's how every single story started because that was how it all and it. I went by that dude's house, got the drugs, and that's how the day started. The week started, the month started. I spent a lot of time in your neck of the woods. I promise. Obsession. Hmm. Uh, and see this, this uh, people, do you know how real this is, by the way, it's scientific, look who it is, Blake Reed, I love when Blake's here, he's one of the coolest people, honestly, on the boat, Blake, love you, um, because of where, because of where our olfactory, uh, um, because of where all of that is located in the brain, in, re in relation to um, the striatum, right, and where we take our memories and imprint them, nothing takes you back uh, faster than will a smell like you ever i remember going to this was unbelievable right you cannot obsession's bad you're right carolyn caroline absolutely bad um but brute but and you know that when he said that matrix rabbit he said brute but uh i hate links africa i don't know that i remember links africa do you there was not one of mine that i could identify Oh, I got you, Nicola. Yeah, those um, and and that yes, smells will take you back in time. They really will. Well, I'm in um, the red door. I'm now you're red. not allowed to you're not allowed to wear anything to go into a men's prison. So crazy, right? I'm in Tucson. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm in Phoenix, and um, they bring in this uh, FBI agent. I remember her last name, and it's the same last name as a big chain of uh, very expensive stores that you might find in New York. Not going any further than that. You guys can play. Um, I, I'm wearing polo green right now, Lisa. I wear that a lot. I'm a I'm a polo kind of guy. Uh, or I wear um, Aqua Digio. Pretty big fan of Aqua Digio too. But been wearing that forever. Thank you, Blake. Love you, man. Uh, but so this FBI agent comes in, and I get brought into the room, and she's wearing the perfume that my ex-wife was wearing the last time that the two of us. So literally the last time I was with a, a, a woman, even in wow. a conversation or anything else. And I walked into that room and I swear to you, it was like getting punched in the face, oh. right? She goes, I got, I have a whole list of questions we need to go over. I go, I'm not talking to you. And the next time you come here, don't wear that, that uh, perfume. Like I'm not doing this. 
Uh, Bulgari black smells like vanilla and rubber. You know something? <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's a great comment. It's a great comment. I'm not a Bulgari guy, right? They make watches. They make jewelry. I am not a Bulgari guy, which is really odd because they do make one of the thinnest watches in the world. They're Octizimo, I think it's called. It is called the Octizimo. If you look it up, their super, super expensive version of it's like 4.9 millimeters or something, which is about as thin as you're going to get, right? They, there is a thinner one. There is one from um, Piaget that's like two millimeters, requires a special winding crown and all of this stuff. But um, yeah, I, I don't know what it is about Bulgaria, but their their scents are awful. They really are. It really does smell like vanilla. I think you love it rubber. and you don't. You're immediately going to go, That's I like that, or you're going to go, Ugh. Well, their watches are the same way. The Octizimo line, are the, that, they're the exact same way. Their, their skeleton is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's just, um, you know, you got to drop a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, Tampa B says, smell is a wave, like light, actually. Quantum entanglement yet again. I like it. Interesting. I like it. We are not allowed to wear perfume. Let's see here. Where did I just miss her? Well, she got rid of her comment. Petruvi smells like raid to me, says Nara. <clears throat> Man, where I went to college freshman year. English yeah, leather yeah. and canoe. I, I had both of those. I had both of those at one time or another were in my uh the original old spice and the glass bottle, the green stuff. Yep. Yeah. Bulgari related to Bugatti. Uh no, different parts of the uh of the world. The Bugatti, believe it or not, so Bugatti is made in Italy now, but Ettore Bugatti um was French. They, uh, that's why the the flag. If you look carefully on all the Bugatti cars, the the colors, it's the the uh, it's not the Italian flag. Uh, the thing with patchouli is uh, patchouli to me smells like a Grateful Dead concert. It does. Yeah, it's just it, it will always a right me. Grateful Dead concert. Yeah, because if you dug scents and aromas, a dead show is like. <laughs> I also like Hawas. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to have to check that out. Hawas, you know this? I'm looking for it now. Yeah, I don't know that one, but I'm going to check it out. Johnny looks like he uh, smells clean just out of uh, out of the shower. You know, just through the shower. Yeah, you're, uh, Johnny smells like burning. Um, <clears throat> you, you get near him and it's, it, he kind of smells like you would imagine Satan might. You know what I mean? Like he just, just stepped out of something that was burning and there's a little smoke and cinder. Hey, am I wrong? Kind of smell like burning. Johnny's got that smell like he just left a fire. Uh, 80s music, great. 80s scents, not so good. Electric Youth, Vanilla Fields, Loves Baby Soft. Loves Baby Soft. I don't know looks that. like he smells good. What a weird thing to type. <laughs> I know it would have been worse. It looks like he smells bad. I mean, that could have been a lot worse. I'll, I'll be, I'll I've always that. been able to smell types of water when I walk into a house. Noticed when I was a kid. I'm weird. That's that's one of the coolest things I've ever heard. I still stand with Dracar. I love patchouli, saddlewood, frankincense, Kestrel. I know who you are. Sandalwood. I know who you are. Saddlewood. Yeah, for real. What did I say? Sand saddlewood. Saddlewood. Well, there is a saddlewood. Uh, that's why synesthesia happens the way it does. Correct. Um, which is a very cool. Uh, it's a very cool concept. It happens sometimes um, to people who don't do drugs, but it happens a lot space to people. Space smells that do. like Johnny. Rick, they say that space smells like burnt steak. I just smell like burnt. So, sort of. You're close. It's a Someone else said they can smell different water. So, apparently, you're not that weird. You love the smell of, you know what? When people say that that, that, that smell reminds them of their father or whatever, my dad always wore a polo, right? And that's always going to smell to me like, like my dad, but bourbon. And my dad's not a, was never a drinker, right? Jack I think Daniels. I think yeah, Jack. He would drink either either Christmas. Jack or Jim Beam or whatever, but he would drink it at Christmas and he would drink it two days of the year. But when I smell it, I'm always it always takes me right back to Christmas. Well, you don't know why that happens? It's because we were little and we said we want to sip. And he goes, You're not gonna like it. We said, please. He said, No, no, no. And how after you hounded that enough, he's like, have a sip. Yeah, here you go, test this. And we had a sip, and what do you say? You thought I was having fun this whole time. You thought this was fun, didn't you? See, it's terrible. Why would you see? want this? You thought I was having fun. I was like, okay, I'm done. She says, I like the smell of uh, pipe smoke. You know something? I can smell pipe smoke. I love 
the smell of pipe smoke. Uh, I can smell chlorine in water. Wow. Yep. Can. Um, can't do white sugar either. Can taste the bleach. Wow. So you have an incredibly developed palate. If you're tasting the the, the bleach in uh, in white sugar, you just have a super super um, attuned palate. That's fascinating. Cats. People make a lot of money doing it. And the ability they have a different set. They have the ability to taste what they smell. Yeah. So if you ever see cats like with their mouth open, like just super focused, they're tasting something. Yeah. So I think that I have like cat in me because I think I can do that. I swear to you, there are things that I can taste from smelling. I'm not even just trying to be funny. Conversations with Christy says, my dad smells like uh, Old Spice and Copenhagen. You know what? Copenhagen is one of the most rugged substances on planet Earth. I will put that, I will put that substance onto the same level playing field, right? As tar heroin. I'm not joking. For being one of the most addictive substances on planet Earth. I had a uh, close friend, Yuki's kid. I had a <laughs> I had a close friend, a friend of Johnny's as well. Um, anyway. Yuki. Yeah. So he, um, no, Johnny does not smell like chili peppers, just like a burning building. It's probably from all of the uh, the hot stuff that he eats. No, Johnny actually uh, smells rather normal, sadly. No, he smells like a, like any other guy. But it is far more fun to say that he smells like he might have a bifurcated tail, you know. Kind of Carry a hay for it? Yeah. Cloven, Cloven hoof. Cloven hoof, kind of red, scaly in nature, right? Carrying a, hair, a hay fork. It's just a lot more fun to... Uh... <laughs> Cats apparently like obsession for men. I'll be darned. A uh, squirrel just happens to like the way I smell. When I come up, uh, she is just loves to uh, to come and get a really big. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you know, she gets super interested. So she like, does get super. And she, interested. And she wants you not to move until she's done. I do remember Babe by Fabergé. No. Happy I Easter remember, cup of coffee. I remember that. I think it came in too. I can tell, describe it. Yep. 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 yep, yep. Happy Easter, Puffinator. Glaze that ham with some Vegemite. Here you go. There's your Vegemite, right? Uh, the ham is uh, in the, uh, yeah, This there's not going to be anything getting glazed by this. You know what I mean? Me. Sorry. Uh, Johnny might eat some, though. Uh, Tommy, do I wear O to catnip? Uh, you would think so, because everywhere I go, kitties, uh, kitties simply love me. They really do. I am one of those people that, uh, that, like the people that say, I have a cat that doesn't go anywhere near anybody. That cat will end up in my uh, in my lap. Yeah. Um, I am not too young to remember uh, Jovan Musk, and believe it or not, I threw a bottle of it out in the last six months because it just had gone bad. But my dad used to uh, used to keep that. That was something that was that a the, unique aroma. That was a unique aroma. That it was really a was. Musty, that was ceremony. Do you know what it was? What what's, was it? What's the stuff from Anchorman? <laughs> Something black tiger or no uh, panther, black panther, black what, panther. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Making pork loin scalloped potatoes and apple pie. Piano mom will be there in uh, about seven and a half hours. Be flying into sex Logan. Panther. Sex panther. Yeah, <laughs> sex panther was the name of it. Ninety percent. Blake time. Blake Reed got that before you did. Well played, Blake. Sixty percent of the time it works. hundred all the time. Yeah, sixty percent of the time it works all the time, or it works all the time. Sixty percent of the time. It's illegal in sixty countries. The look of confusion and horror on Johnny's face when Tommy said he might eat some Vegemite. Yeah, he knows I'm not eating any Vegemite, though. You make soap. Oh, nice. And like the mask. I use it. Occasionally he does. I buy the, the kind of soap that you make. That is the stuff that we use, believe it or not. We're, we, use, uh, we use spoiled, um, what's the name of that place we shop at? I don't remember. It's right at the bottom of the hill there, Captain. Doesn't help me. Right down there, and then when we uh, is that a uh, food? Uh, no, yeah, is yeah. that the one? Yeah, the, huh? the, the fancy one. So, uh, Whole Foods, thank you. Sure, Whole Foods. Good lord, man, I felt like I was playing a twenty thousand dollar pyramid with a four year old. The yeah, uh, you, you couldn't come up with it, that's because I'm stupid. We've already Wait. established this. You have a full brain, I'm working with a half. Hey, I'll bet you the number of concussions I've got rivals yours. I'll give uh, that you uh, that may be the case. I'll have to give you. Hold on. I'll have to give you a fire performance so the burn is fresh. 
Nice. Axe uh, body spray is awful, but better than the uh, Nate it's smell. Just for freshman college. Be better than the natural smell of teenage boys, says Kestrel. <laughs> teenage boys smell like a cutting zip. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, fortunately, they didn't have that when I was a kid because I think I probably would have used it. Um, this is really funny because I swear to God I've thought of this, Jenny. Jenny says, oh, I'm a middle school teacher. All I smell is ax in the hallways. It does not cover up the BO. No. Well, you know what? And when you're a kid, that's the concept, right? Like, I don't think, I remember a time in my life where I thought that that stuff covered smell. Like, it wasn't something that you cleaned yourself, right? And then put it on afterwards. But, you know, my, my friend Fred died last year. Uh, I went to, uh, to school with him and... Uh, all through, we, we went. Uh, I lost a couple of a uh, couple of guys. I went to um, to first grade with died last year. It was a tough year for because uh, we only had eight of us, and uh, and two are, are are gone now. And they were very close friends as well. But uh, mm -hmm. but my friend Fred, I remember football practice right coming in eighth grade, but coming in after football practice and watching him take off his shoulder pads and realizing that the shirt and tie he wore to school were on underneath his shoulder pads. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, and then he got on the late bus and he was sitting like a seat in front of me. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I'm barking. I can smell myself, right? Uh, and I just thought, how bad is he stinking? The man just played football with a tie on under his, yeah. Yeah, that's a funny memories. Many smokers like the smell of skunk. Um, I oh. love the smell of a skunk. I always yeah. have. I, you know what's funny? I remember driving with my kids in the car. They're little. They're going, oh, they loved it. I was like, oh, geez. Yeah, no hope. No. Yeah. Collecting old bottles, many of them old perfumes and colognes in collectible bottles and have uh, scents still in them. Nice. Shell them off. Uh, I, uh, I'll tell you something. You know what? I hate to sound like a, um, like a uh, purist, but I am a big fan of Chanel number no. five. <laughs> I I'm really the ultimate purist. I'm just a big fan of the way women smell. I am too. I'm not right, uh, so much. No one can put anything in a bottle that's better than that. So, did you guys catch that? Sorry, that's my uh, disgusting and perverted brother. Can I get on? I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, of uh, of women in general, and I'm going to go on the record as saying this: I like women. I like tall women. I like short women. I like thin women. I like thick women. I love all women. I really do. I've never and, seen one I didn't find something beautiful. Yeah. Ever. Yep. I think that um, I think that there is really something to that. There really is something to that. Four smells I absolutely can't stand. This is paper. Uh, this is Blake Reed. One, paper mill. Got it. Got it. Two, rotten cabbage. Oh, brother. Do not go to prison. Number three, weed. Doesn't like the smell of burning. Do you mean the smoke of weed or do you mean... You probably mean, because number four is skunk. I'm guessing you mean the weed before it's burnt. Because it has a much different aroma prior to burning than it does after burning. I like the smell of weed before it burns. The smoke, I don't know that... It's been a long time. I haven't really been around a whole lot of that uh, in a really, really long time. <laughs> Brazy says, I love the smell of skunk, weed, gasoline. You and me. Yep, we can hang out. All of those things. How about a farm, manure? I know it sounds ridiculous, but I love the way a farm smells. Clinique Happy is my go-to. It's the only uh, thing my mind was. That was one that was very good. I could spot. I can identify that fifteen feet away. Yeah. Even if you have a little bit on. Yeah. Never knew there were people that liked the smell of skunks beside my ex ex-husband. Oh no, you got your dead skunk in the middle of the road. You know, there's a song, right, about a dead skunk in the middle of the road. Stink in the high heaven. Stink in the high heaven. And uh, boy, the chief. My dad would get so excited. And that, that song would come on. He would, uh, he, got a, he got a kick out of that one. As for me, it depends on the strain. But I love the smell of weed and really love the smell of petrol. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that very often they kind of go hand in hand. The people that like the, uh, the smell of, uh, of weed or skunk tend to like the smell of gas. Too. Driving past a farm in the south, the smell of cow manure was actually nice. Jeremy, that's what Johnny Scobo just said a second ago. He doesn't have a problem with that at all. Lisa Beam says, love the smell of horses. Huh. Fresh mowed grass, love it. 
Love it. Love it. You saw a live skunk on your wa on the walk last week, says Kristen and Melinda. I'll be damned. The smell of ivory snow is my favorite. Do you know who the ivory snow baby was? I do. I absolutely do. Who was it? You want me to say it? Porn star. You bet. Goodness gracious, look at this. Creepy old lady says, Loudon Wainwright III is one of my favorite composers. That would be who brought you. You got your dead skunk in the middle of the road. Well played, creepy old lady. I got a creepy old lady named Cocaine Katie. Every time I see that name, with the breeders on the games. You know, some people like to say that happiness is the scent of sin. <laughs> Got that from a Japanese pop song? I used to walk into casinos. I played a lot of poker. You never walked into a casino. Let me tell you something. This is what he would do. Every time Tommy and I would get into, walk into a casino, we'd start walking slowly. As we get close to the door, he'd push me out of the way and pull the doors open and literally <laughs> run into the casino. I kid you not. It was just for effect. It was just to make me laugh. But he did that every time. I like amazing. poker. I like poker. I really do, right? I don't have a problem. I don't. Do I? We get thrown out a lot. I, I mean, yeah, we, get, we do get thrown out of a lot of uh, poker rooms. Primarily because we look an awful lot alike. And when you start playing at the same table, people get kind of <clears throat> iffy with we how you We don't sit beside each other. We don't sit anywhere near each other. We usually try to, to, to look a little different. But uh, but um, I, am a, I used to really enjoy uh, walking in there, uh, Blake, and I would go, do you smell that? And people would go, no, what? Sin. Because they're just, that to me is what a casino always smelled like, right? It's amazing to me that you could walk in there and there could be 600 people smoking a cigarette, but the place doesn't smell like a cigarette, right? They're, they're pretty damn good at what they do. Although they're getting to the point now where you can't smoke even in casinos, believe it or not. Although I was told I couldn't vape in a casino and that absolutely blew my mind. Guy walked up to me in the middle of the, of the uh, room as I'm walking across. He goes, you can't vape in a casino. I'm like, you're going to take people's money and tell them they can't vape? Wow. That's just insane. Like, if you were taking my money, I think I'd be vaping. On the bright side, I wasn't gambling. But I love the smell of desperation in every, in every Corey Feldman song. If you got a microphone, go ahead and drop it. That is an excellent. You know, what's really funny, Jeremy, is uh, my brother says, He's of the firm belief that he went to like rock and roll fantasy camp and just said, I like this. I'm going to do it forever. And that's kind of what he's been doing. He's, he's living the rock and roll fantasy camp. He's, um, he's, uh, he's awful. He's just, he's awful. He really is. That great short I showed you the other day. Wasn't that spectacular? Yeah. Glorious. Yeah. He's the gift that keeps on. This? He's doing this. He's doing this. And with the look on his face and his dancing is just great. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, he's. I always believe that heaven smells like cinnamon. That's very, very funny. Mm. Warm and comforting. I think heaven is going to smell like uh, apple pie. Kestro has read Corey Feldman's book, and it's very bad. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what Kestro says. I didn't say it. It's very bad. Oh, let's put that up. I kind of want to read it. Let's put that up. Where Any chance it? he wrote it, I wonder? That is so funny. No, I, I doubt he wrote it. I mean. If I thought he wrote it, like he really wrote it, I'd read it. Just because I want to hear what he sounds like. But I don't believe he wrote it. Good Lord. Is it whale vomit they put in cents? They will pay you a fortune for it if you happen to find some on the beach. Um, See, I, if it were me, I would just find. Make friends with a whale. I would just, nah, yeah, I would find the whale and um, and maybe feed it Vegemite, you know? Find out what it likes and then hook it up. Yeah, just feed it Vegemite and then watch it vomit. And the... I'll bet you I could. there's a way I can make something with Vegemite and you could eat it, not even know it, and love it. I wouldn't do it to you because you'd lose your mind, but I promise you I could. Because if you try to feed me something that I, I don't know about, I'm going to set you on fire while you sleep. I remember one time we, we Mama Scoville tried feeding turkey bacon to the chief. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> one bite, threw it on the table. It was, yeah. What is this? He was not happy. Camel Turkish gold cigarettes. So smells take me back. I don't think they make them anymore. 
uh, but I kept an empty pack just to smell weirdo. Uh, she said weirdo. I didn't do that. She did that. I was just reading it. Um, do you, they, the camel used to come in a metal tin, right? That was super thin. It was like maybe about that thick, right? And they were rectangular. They looked like um, the Canadian, um, like the cigarettes used to get in Canada. But they came in that little, but I used to use those things to cook dope in, right? Because they were they were metal. You didn't have to have a spoon. And I used to carry those camel and they were the Turkish. The Turkish gold was one of the ones in those little cans. And uh, I know that I got arrested and I was, I was in a bank, right? I got picked up in a bank and I did not for bank robbery or anything else. They just wanted to talk to me, but they were harassing me in a bank because it probably seemed like it was poetic and they wanted, but I, I got this crap out of my back pocket while handcuffed, right? They got me sitting in the, uh, in the, I don't know what the the person that runs the bank manager, whatever, but I'm sitting in that person's office while they're talking to the cops. And I got this can of, uh, shit out of my pocket and jammed it down into the couch right and managed to um to not you know get caught with any of that then went back into that office like two weeks later and got my stuff back yeah and i didn't even bs the guy i I knocked on the door and he's like can i help you i said yeah i stashed something in your couch i'm here hey we talked about this before i don't remember your answer do you remember the time you were in dallas with bailey Uh uh-huh and i got thrown in jail yeah you got a bar fight i had stuff in my pocket I didn't get caught for that. Did you guys, did Bailey do something? Yeah. He paid somebody off. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That was the most perplexing thing. I almost said, but what happened to that bag? I, just because the curiosity was killing me. I'm like, I'm leaving? You're letting me leave? Yeah, we paid a fortune. I know when I walked in here. Yeah, we paid a fortune for you to walk out of there. That's why everybody hated you for the next three weeks. You don't remember any of this? Well, I remember. I, that was a weird thing. That guy had it coming, though. I was not, I did not pick that fight. Yeah, well, I did not. You know, the really funny thing is, this was one of those three times that I can remember in my life where I said to Johnny Scoville, please do me a favor. Don't get into a fist fight and don't get arrested. But here's the thing you should have learned not to say that to me anymore. I'm a, it's, a, it's Easter. That was, it's Easter. If you that say was that the to second me today, you know what you're going to be bailing me out tonight. Yeah, that was the second time that, uh, that he had done it. I said, right, the first time it was a birthday, right? Uh, but the second time I said, hey, man, please. Don't get into a fist fight tonight, right? And don't, you know, don't hit anybody. Sure as crap. This guy calls me and this guy, listen, he's fat. I'm not being disrespectful, right? I don't pick on people or anything. This guy was fat. He was so fat that it was amazing that he could walk, right? For real. This, that's how big this dude was. He could, he, not, he could not get into a bathroom on an airplane because he was wider than the door by two, right? He had to buy two first class seats. He was a very here's the crazy thing. He would drink man. on a flight. He would drink, and this sounds so hard to believe that nobody would believe me. He would drink five fifths of vodka straight to his face from five, Houston. Five fifths, and not use the restroom because he couldn't fit in it. From Houston to uh, Budapest, right? That flight. Nobody believes that. I watched him do it five mm-hmm. times. I watched him do it five times, and on on a New Year's Eve party. When we were going from 2000 to 2001, right? Um, we uh, we had a, a New Year's gathering and he said to me, he gives me the list for booze and he says, we need seven fifths of kettle one. And I said to him, you do know that my entire team drinks beer, right? There's nobody on my team that's going to drink vodka. And he said, no, it's for me. And he said it like you would say, get me an extra pack of smokes. Uh, Kestrel, th- this guy was that... He's that big, right? He was um, he was that size. But he calls me in the middle of the night and he says, your brother's in jail. I said, lovely. I said, all right. I'm, uh, I said, I'll, I'll meet you in the, uh, in the lobby. I opened the door like 40 seconds later and he's at the door. He's the scariest. It, was he a terrifying human being? He really was a frightening dude. And he's yeah, just, he he's the biggest human you've ever, he looked like Jabba the Hutt. I'm not being disrespectful. That's what the dude looks like. But I opened the door and he goes, uh, how much do you have on you in cash? I said, uh, I don't know. I'm like, not a lot, you know, 200 bucks or something like that. And he goes, um, his charge is we're, we're going to have to pay this off. And he said it like you would, we need, we a, need to get avenue, gas. You could, you, like it was an avenue that was afforded you. Yeah, we need, to, we need to get gas, you know, on the way to get him or whatever. He just said, you know, we, we gonna, we're going to have to, uh, to get some cash. We're going to have to pay somebody off. And I didn't have anything to do with, with uh, how tall was the fat fella? He was probably 5'10", yeah. 5'10-ish. But he literally could not see, 
sit in one seat right, in an airplane. I would have loved, not filmed him visually, but just the audio of him in the bathroom afterwards, because he would pee for five minutes. We would land, right? <laughs> we would land in Budapest or whatever, and he would go into the bathroom. And it's that opening scene from um, from uh, the, uh, you know, what's his name? That? Remember when they unfreeze him? Yeah. Uh... Uh, yeah, baby. What the hell? It's a... Uh... Austin Powers. Shagging. Yeah, Austin Powers. When they unfreeze Austin Powers. Literally, this guy would stand there and he would use the restroom for four or five minutes. And he wouldn't stand at a urinal because the guy would take up three of them. So he would like get sideways to get into a, a bathroom stall, which obviously makes considerably more noise. But we would sit there trying not to laugh, like staring at each other going, you got to be kidding. Right? Like, well, you said you're a comedian. Yeah, like, I said, come on, come on, come on. You're like, shh, this comedian is the part that, yeah, I, Because I remember saying to him, Budapest was great. There. I went there a lot. I went to Budapest a lot. But we got there and he went, remember this? Oh, I yeah, said to him, I forgot about that. I said to him, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything else. I said, but do you have a, do you have a bag? You know what I mean? Are you, you don't use a, a restroom like a normal person. I'm like, you know, we got on an airplane for 14 hours while you drink a fifth after one after another. I'm like, and he said, when I can't touch my thumb and my pinky, I know it's time to go to the bathroom. I watched him. True story. True story. I watched him drink 24, 24 Diet Cokes and two pots of coffee while we were writing out, we were doing scripts. And yeah, just a case, a case of uh, of, co of uh, Diet Coke. That's 24 cans. Like, and never got up to go to the bathroom. Guy was a freak. He really was. He cannot be alive. I was thinking that. I was wondering. There's no way because he was what he he had to have been 50, in his 60s. sixty then, and that was what twenty years ago. Yeah, twenty five. No, no diaper. No diaper. Amazingly, uh, Valerie. What he had was. I mean, this is going to sound horrific. He I would have loved to have seen his autopsy. He, I was going to say he needs to be looked at. I would have loved to have seen his autopsy because I guarantee you that you could have I taken his bladder and probably put a Honda CRX in it. He's got two normal names are fine just by Google. I wonder where. I know. I know. I could give you everything you needed okay, to find well, him, but he's not going to. But he's not going to be alive. Yeah, I know his middle name. I know. I, I probably have his birth date. If not, I certainly know the year. He's he's older than dirt. There's no way he's alive. He wouldn't have been alive if he was in good shape. I was thinking that he was in amazing health. He was older than uh, than Rex by about seven years, and Rex today would be in his seventies. Right. So um, now let's talk about Reese since she's not here, and I figure. If we wait this long, there's no chance she'll be on it. Uh, I want to thank all of you that have reached out and said things like, I was wrong about Reese. Or, you know, after listening to her, there's really something to be said for people who are willing to listen to someone that the first time they hear, they think they don't have something in common with. It is literally what makes this boat so unique. But I got five emails um, after last night's uh video that she and I did together. And every one of them just said, you two are better uh, together than, uh, than anything I've seen. Right. And all of them went on to say, and I didn't dig the two of you together when we started watching it, when I started watching you, I think that I love Reese too, uh, geo planet Jane. I really do. Um, and I mean that, uh, you've been a fan since, uh, since Aaron outed her, um, she is relatable. I'll tell you something right now. I wasn't a fan of Reese in the beginning. <laughs> I wasn't, um, and I would be the first to tell her that. I am a a big mother loving fan of hers right now, though. I'll be really honest with you. Um, Reese enables me to uh, to. I talk to Reese in ways that I've never been able to talk to anyone else. I don't know why that is. I don't. But I have zero inhibitions when talking to uh, to Reese, and that's a gift at a level I can't explain. I've been able to uh, open up to her uh, in ways that I don't open up to people who I pay to open up to, right? And make no mistake, you pay to open up to somebody so that they will not relate to you. I went and watched uh, what she did last night. It was incredible. Uh, it was incredible. You should absolutely... Um, Go and check that out. You know what else I want to talk about real quick? And since we're um, an hour and 20 minutes in, I think that this is probably a good time to do it. Um, 
It, it, you know what? It is healing for me, Kestrel. I think it is healing for me. Um, real too scummy. I love that. Um, I love it, and I love that uh, that you know you're articulate and uh, and do a pretty nice job of uh, of describing that in a uh, in a nice way. Mara says I didn't like her at first. I thought she was silly, but now I love her silliness and her honesty. It's refreshing, but you two together are awesome. The chemistry, you know, it's, uh, it's fun to, um, it's fun to have a friend of the opposite sex. Uh, and I think that, um, the two of us, I laugh harder with her than I do with anybody but Johnny. Right. And that's, I just don't, I, I don't get belly laughs too often. Right. I really don't. And, uh, they're a drug. In fact, they're my drug of choice. You know, they really are, but that's absolutely my, uh, my drug of choice. Davey, I love you. I, I really do. You're a rock star. No question. Actually, everybody here is. If you look at the names, they're all there. Uh, Kay Ollie makes one that smells like apple pie. You can see the soul tie. Wow, I've never heard that, but that's a very cool thing to say. I would say that there's a uh, there's a tie there, to be sure. Um, I have... Uh, I've, I've progressed farther, uh, since she started to come on the boat than I had in the previous year or so, you know, you kind of plateau and it's just one of those things that happen. Um, you know, Janine, let me, uh, and I think I'm glad that you said this. I'm glad that you said this. I really am. And I'm not upset with you, by the way, and no one else should be. Because this is a very legit comment. I liked her until she came on the live with you and told us if we didn't like uh, what she was saying, we could just leave. Um, I've said um, things so many times like, you know what, if you don't like it, there's the door. I say things like that a lot. And you know what? I probably shouldn't. I really shouldn't. Um, but this is such a hard gig, right? It's such a hard gig. As you sit here and you talk, right? Every four seconds, the six comments that I see disappear and I see six more, right? And she's doing the same thing. And as you're sitting and you're talking and you're going, you see someone that says something that is just, right? They just do this and they do it to turn. We saw somebody last night who came on and wanted me to answer to the fact that the cult has called me a sex offender. Like that's fun. It's not. And it makes you want to go, you know what? F you. Why don't you beat it? And it's not the right thing to do. It's not. But we have an occupation that is unlike any others where people watch you for what they, you know, for what you do and can be crappy to you, right? No one's going to see what they say. Goes by the way, but they're going to see what you say back, right? And I assure you that um, she does care what everybody says. If she didn't, then she wouldn't have said what she said. Um, it's a it's a very very um, difficult thing to to sit in this chair, and to sit in this chair and um, they are digging on your feet, Uncle Johnny. How's that? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, they're liking it. The uh, I have great feet, by the way. I really do. Sorry. Thank you, Casey uh, Key. I love that. Um, it's it really is something that um, is is a unique experiment, right? But to sit and do what we do and try to do it without firing back. This is what we're going to talk about. It's perfect segue, by the way. Did you go see the video that um, was done on Liz Ferris's show yesterday? It was not done by Liz. It was done by her beautiful partner, right? Not feet again. You're safe this time, Davey. I have nothing for Johnny's feet. I think you're probably in good shape. Um, so you guys know that there are content creators, right, who create content. And then there are content creators who just pick on people. And that's kind of their deal, right? That's how they, that's how they make a living. And whatever, man, right? Whatever makes you happy. But... Uh, so here it is. Uh, Liz has come out and said that, um, you know, there's been some talk that she and or she and or 
um, her partner, had been talking to this individual who has been an enemy, so to speak, of SPTV. And the term mole got thrown around a lot, right? And Carrie was coming out to say that she had been the person that had reached out to this individual. I want to, before any of us start judging too much about that, let me start with this. That guy's thrown as much crap at me as just about anybody else. In fact, the crap he's thrown at me has probably been a little uglier than it has been when thrown at anybody else, right? So I, I should probably, you know, be bummed out about this. I'm, I'm not, right? If my father was, was uh, gone and missing and somebody said to me, um, I can help you find where your dad is, I'd do anything for that. I'd do anything for that, right? I know Spanky would do anything for that. I know he would do anything for that. So the fact that, you know, this, this scumbag uh, was able to, um, to get over on somebody by playing on the literally the most depraved way that you could play on somebody's emotions. Anybody that wants to judge that, right, may, maybe try taking a, a walk in those shoes for a minute, right? You know, this is somebody that doesn't know whether or not, thought dad was dead. I mean, do you know this story? She thought her father was dead until the cult was stupid enough to call and ask for money, right? Because he walked away. Now, all of a sudden, you find out that the person you buried a decade ago ain't dead. Can you imagine? So now some scumbag pops up and says, hey, if you give me a little info on what's going on, you know, behind the scenes, right? Who's Tommy banging? Or, or anything else, right? I'm not mad at him. Not, not at them. What that guy did, that's pretty sick, right? That's pretty sick. But that's how people like this make a living, right? By being sick. They don't have talent, right? It does, believe it or not, require a bit of talent to connect to people. Right now, that may be a may be a talent that people, um, you know, are born with or or develop or whatever. But if you don't have that talent, then you just got to shock people, right? And you get that shock any way you can, right? Yeah, to hear her say she's not going to uh, look for her father anymore, right? That, that's that's tough, isn't it? But if I'm not mad, and this dude made videos about me, and I don't know where anybody else has got a whole lot of crap to be mad about right for real i'm not i'm not too torqued out of shape about it and i promise you that when all of this was going on i was part of that discussion <laughs> you know i think y'all need to get over it right well, everybody that really seems to be struggling with this you know how much dirt did it throw on your doorstep maybe uh, maybe get over it um yeah he doesn't uh, he doesn't here's the good news the dude does what like 300 views a day right He's not, he's not much of an audience. He's irrelevant. He's so completely. To give him any power. Correct. He's completely irrelevant. But and what, he what he did, right, what he did is, uh, is, is crappy. Right? What he did right was just completely crappy, but I don't think that we blame Carrie or Liz for it. That's my, uh, ask my two cents. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not angry over it. Tree hugger. I'll be honest. I just don't want people to, uh, to crap on her about this. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe try to consider, you know, what it would feel like if, uh, you know, if the promise was the info on where your dad was, because I'd bite. I don't know anybody that wouldn't, right? Uh, it's just kind of logical, but that's me. What do I know? Um, you're going to go mod a live stream. Well, have a good time, Stay Speria. I'm going to uh, call this a day. I'm going to go and uh, spend a little time with God. But I will see you people later today on this. You have my word. You know what this is? Huh? Love you, you all. Do you know what that is? That, people. Well, that is an excellent. Wait, do you see that? Look at those toe beans, huh? Look at that. That is a stellar kitty foot. I'll tell you what. Uh, you know what? She better chill tonight. Yeah, she's a little bit, you're a little bit of a naughty cat, aren't you? All right, people. I am Captain Tommy Scoville. We're going to be doing a night yard tonight. And if uh, Spanx Calhoun is uh, is able, we might even take a few calls. But we worked him uh, like the people that built the uh, pyramids last night. So we might uh, might have to give the, kid a, give the kid a break. Calhoun, I love you. All right, people. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Happy Easter, everybody. He has risen.